Welcome to Misplaced Garage. Today, I'm making a low car even lower. Before I lift the car up and throw the block in there, I'm going to measure just to see if I actually gain an inch. So this is at 25 and a quarter going through the center of the wheel on this side. 24 and a quarter, interesting. One side is lower. It's like a full inch. Wow, that's actually a lot. 25 and a quarter and 24 and a quarter. Interesting. Just realized I only actually have to take off one side of this leaf spring, the bolt. I don't have to unbolt it from the other side, I think, because I should just be able to lift it up and then it'll uh, move enough to where I can put the, the block in place. It's nice taking this apart with new hardware on it. It actually comes apart and doesn't just strip off. It makes it way easier. So I couldn't get the block in that way by just trying to shove it in there. So I have reattached the leaf springs on both sides. And then I'm going to put a, a jack stand underneath each brake drum on, in that area and then lower the car and see if the weight will pull the leaf spring flat enough to where I can slip the block under there a lot easier. We'll see if that works. And if not, I basically have to take the diff completely back out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely how you do it. There is plenty of space in there. I don't know if you can see, but the leaf spring is literally up as high as it will possibly go. So that worked out pretty dang good. I'm able to get the front two studs into place, but I can't get the rear two just because of the gas tank. It is too low to be able to slide the bolts in there. So I think I have to move the gas tank around, unfortunately. Since the uh, bolt holes into the differential actually go into there and you could send a, one of these into the ring gear, I actually measured out how far I need to stop so that way I can just set them all at that exact height. So this is going in exactly 7 eighths of an inch. Alright, I got all the uh, studs in there, so now I'm going to give them a good torque down. I'm just going to do it by feel because I don't know the actual torque specs on these. And this is probably going to lower the block a little bit into place, so I don't expect it to not move at all. And I know what you're thinking, I, these studs are way too tall for this plate to go back on. I'm just gonna have to drill some holes into the plate to allow the uh, studs to be able to go through. And how I'm going to be able to drill the holes is I'm going to put uh, some sort of paint on each one of these and then just line it up with the holes and then press down and then smoke some holes where the paint was and then Obviously draw them a bit larger because this is going to flex a little bit. You wouldn't want this to like pop off.
I sprayed the uh, holes with a little black spray paint so that they don't rust in the future. And then those studs are unfinished metal, so I also sprayed uh, some clear coat on those to hopefully prevent some rusting. But yeah, other than that, it fits right on. The final piece to the puzzle is just to throw the wheels back on. I tightened everything back down to a spec. The last thing to put together is just the backs, the back, the backing to the car. I was gonna say back seat, but it's really, it's obviously not a back seat on this car. And yes, eventually I will get another lug nut, but right now I'm just rolling the car around. So three is fine. Let's see how low this car really goes. This is gonna be interesting. With the spring axle, I'll probably have to push the car forward and backwards to get it back into alignment. But other than that, it should drop down pretty dang low. Well. Why is that seeming to be higher? Push the car back and forth and the suspension settled and boy is that low now. <laughs> I can fit like two fingers in there. There also is some gnarly camber on it. It might be a little too much for my taste. Like the wheel is like, yeah, it's not great. But also on this side, this side's a little bit lower I think. But anyways, that is, that is a huge difference. I'll probably measure the camber angle at some point just because that might be too much. I don't know, that's, that's a lot for me. Let's see if there's much of a difference in actual height here. This side is 23 and an eighth. So that's a whole, that's like six eighths gone on one side. Why is that? Why is one side so much lower? That does not make sense to me. Maybe there's something with the leaf spring funky. Maybe I'll order a new leaf spring, but that doesn't seem right to me. So that side of the car is close to an inch lower. Not only that, but if I measure from the first tire tread in there to the fender, I get about two and a half inches. Then I go to the other side. This is just, Measuring camber in a really rough way, but first tire tread in here, I get three and a half inches. Something is drastically wrong. And I think it has to do with the leaf spring being super old, obviously. So I'm gonna put some research into that, see what's wrong, maybe I'll order a new leaf spring. But that's, I guess, how it's gonna sit for now until I can start working on the front end. Kind of annoying, but whatever. It's back on the ground and it moves. Well, there it is. The rear is lowered for now at least. But anyways, if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.